Okay, so this is a uh, unboxing and also week-long review, basically, of the Estonia Co-Pilot um, Aviation Timepiece. And we're going to start the video out in Suffolk, Virginia, where I conduct some business. And we'll be visiting multiple cities in Hampton Roads and 757 in the course of this video covering approximately a week of the only timepiece. There's some information there that comes from the box about Stoyer's history and about the timepiece itself, as well as warranty information and also setting your Stoyer timepiece. There will also be information that will pop up on the screen, some of the technical stuff, uh, courtesy, uh, or, or credit rather, Amazon and Stoyer. There are little rubber keepers that keep the watch in the box, as you can see, we're messing with it right there. So be aware of that. But it's a nice box. You can utilize it for transporting your watch. And this trap is a Generine leather strap, distressed looking vintage strap. There's a case back, very fair. Very nice, very cool looking lock. There's the front there with the slide rule. The keepers are sufficient. Very much reminded me of the styling um, of uh, an 88 timepiece I've already reviewed on the channel. I do plan on doing some more 88 reviews in the future. And of course, comparing it visually to my Shogarelli Vintage Pilot 7200 Tac 1 timepiece, I'll leave links to some previous. Um, Flieger Aviation timepieces in the description as well as some links to some of the locations I've filmed this video at in case you're interested and you are an aviation aerospace uh, nerd. So setting a time was pretty simple. I did have to play with the chrono um, a little bit to get the watch zeroed out because you can see you'll see that it's not totally zeroed out. They zero it out. Not a big deal. Chrono works fine, just have to keep messing with the pusher to get it to zero out right on the 12, which it eventually did. Over the week or so now of owning a timepiece, as we compare it some to the finished pilot there on the left, the Sugar Belly, um, I've had no problems, including the great things you can see there, is it fit. This is my very, very tiny wrist. I have very tiny wrist. Um, it fit it no problem. I did not have to poke a hole or slip into the strap at all. And that is great. I hate poking holes or slips into straps to make them fit. Um, because I have small wrist. There is the domed mineral crystal. And again, now that the watch has been unboxed, I'm just showing clips of parts of my life as I travel different places in Hampton Roads, such as the Military Aviation Museum and the Pongo section of Virginia Beach. I am a year-long member of the Military Aviation Museum and the Pongo section of Virginia Beach and wish to encourage you to go to this place and take your children there. Uh, they'll enjoy it, lots of history there. They, when, when the world is normal, they also do flights as well, uh, doing the warmer, warmer months and air, air, um, aerial demonstrations, um, different kinds of classes, uh, history classes there. Wonderful place to go when the world is normal. Of course, the world is not normal at the moment, but still a wonderful place to, to go as I pose in front of this U.S. Army uh, World War II fighter aircraft. But back to the watch. Um, the watch does not loom at all, but the description of the watch never said that it loomed, so I won't hold it against it, but I do wish the watch loomed. The bezel does not rotate. Uh, when you're on Amazon and you're reading some of the questions, <laughs> one of the answers or responses seems to indicate that the bezel rotates. And then you read down further and it says it doesn't. Well, as an owner of this timepiece now for just over a week or so, 
the bezel does not rotate. So it doesn't rotate for the slide rule. This watch on my wrist is very comfortable. There are times when I almost don't notice it's there. Again, very similar in its feel to uh, an AV8 timepiece I reviewed on the channel a couple of months ago. I'll try to make the link links to the other watches you'll see later on in the video and the watch watches the watch you've already seen. And also links to the places you're gonna see in this video. One thing I do like, um, and again, uh, in case I haven't mentioned it before, uh, credit to Amazon and Stoyer for some other technical information, other information that uh, is in this video, is I like, just like AV8, uh, Stoyer puts like that historical link between their timepieces and, you know, aviation and aircraft. And I like that as a history nerd, as an aviation nerd. I appreciate that. Again, the watch is a slide rule. Um, has an A-type dial. I did find the dial a little bit cluttered, not as easy to read as um, any 88 timepiece I already own, or the two Shotarelli timepieces that I already own. So the dial is a little bit cluttered. Um, but I do like the vintage uh, style of it. It's not a very big watch per se. Um, but on my small wrist, very puni Mr. Puniverse wrist, uh, any watch is a big watch to me because I have very small wrists. Oh, genetics, genetics. Why couldn't I have? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, genetics, why? But anyway, there's me uh, posing. Pimpin' ain't easy. But I think that most of us, average Joes that like aircraft, that will find this watch to be a great timepiece. And I do want to encourage you guys to go to Amazon or directly to the Storyer website. And also go uh, sign up on the Storyer email. Uh, they do send you out emails. Um, when they're having sales and they offer discounts directly from Stoyer um, if you don't want to go to Amazon. I do apologize about the sniffling in this video and other videos. I have bad allergies and sinuses and yes, I am taking allergy medicine. Um, I have a veterans appointment scheduled soon, video conference appointment soon, and hopefully then I'll be able to order some of the nasal stuff that my veterans administration uh, doctor uh, gave me before, and that stuff worked great. Uh, but right now I'm using some over-the-counter stuff that helps, but it doesn't work as good as good old-fashioned veterans administration does. But, uh, so I do apologize about the sniffling, but there's not much I can do about it. But anyway, um, yeah, great watch. I am very, very pleased with the watch, and I believe that anyone that purchases this watch, if you are a watch nerd, aviation nerd, aerospace nerd, that you'll be very pleased with this um, timepiece on your wrist, and it's sure, in my opinion, to get to give you a nod from anyone that knows anything about. Um, aviation aerospace history and our aviation aerospace timepieces um, I think this watch will at least give it a nod of respect from other um, aviation watch and aerospace um, enthusiasts and professionals um, alike and again in this video you guys are seeing me live my daily life uh, over the course of a week uh, you know uh, coming to work going from work uh, visiting various airports and so forth and so on this is over about a one week period of time. Okay, so today I'm at the Executive Airport in Suffolk, Virginia. I want to thank the gentleman at the desk there for talking to you for a minute to make sure that it was okay to walk out here. And he's like, yeah, you can walk up to him, you know, pretty much. So, um, 
So we're filming here today. I'm actually in Suffolk because a lot of you guys know I have business out here in Suffolk that I take care of. Um, and since this is, this is part of the video, it's just kind of showing you guys about my daily life and the watch. I figured I'd come here since this is an aviation watch and talk about a few things here. So. So this is several days into um, having this timepiece and along with some of the voiceover stuff um, I'm sure you guys have already heard. I'm pretty, pretty well pleased with um, the watch um, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit more about as the days go on as far as the watch is concerned um, how it's been holding up and again I want to give a shout out to the gentleman at the front desk um, they're here at the Suffolk Executive Airport I came in not knowing what their rules were because um, in my hometown of Norfolk I live in Virginia Beach, but my hometown in Norfolk, at Norfolk International, that's actually an FAA observation area that's there, the public can use, but I wasn't quite sure about stuff at the executive airport, and so I went, did the right thing, went to the front desk, asked a few questions, guy was like, yeah, it's cool. So, here I am, shooting a cool video on the ramp. Yeah. And that's skydive stuff, by the way, they're actually in a the building over that way. I'm not jumping out of a perfectly good airplane myself personally, unless I have this is an emergency. But uh, if I did, this is definitely a watch, a watch I'd wear for something like that. So in this part of the video, I also want to give a shout out to a gentleman, I'll just call his first name, um, Rob, um, and also to the owner of uh, one of the aircraft you see in this video that allowed me to get up very, very close to the aircraft um, and film. So shout out to those folks and uh, thank you so much. So just enjoying uh, brisket at the uh, Suffolk Executive Airport, and let me tell you, the brisket, uh, the cheese brisket here at the airport is great, and the people here at the airport are uh, just awesome today, just wonderful people, uh, wonderful environment at the Suffolk uh, Executive Airport. So while we're driving away, I want to also mention I have a second channel called Virginia Beach Rides here. Please check that out. So this is uh, my woman and I. We're actually at Fort Monroe. Um, and just, you know, living my life. Uh, I'm a history nerd. I like history. And just, uh, yeah, enjoying life, learning about history, exploring. And uh, this watch uh, this has been holding up great. Uh, no major issues uh, with the timepiece uh, at all um, and I really can't complain now I don't own any fancy machines or detectors for knowing how many seconds a day the watch gains or loses uh, I don't have all that fancy stuff I'm a small YouTube channel, but what I can tell you is, compared to my other watches, um, it seems to be uh, seems to be holding its time pretty well. And for most of us average Joes, we're not concerned with plus or minus you know, this or that. Uh, it won't be a problem um, at all. 
And this is, uh, is an aviation watch. First of all, that's quarters one, by the way, down there, where uh, Lincoln stayed uh, when they were planning, uh, basically, to bombard Norfolk. Uh, but anyway, um, for those who don't know, here at, or at Fort Monroe uh, in Hampton, Virginia, um, there is actually a small airport that the U.S. Army uh, used to operate there at Fort Monroe, uh, not too, too far away from where I'm standing in the, the scenes you're seeing. Um, so there's actually part of a runway that the U.S. Army used to use at Fort Monroe. And since this is an aviation watch we're talking about today, I figured it was appropriate uh, that I mention that fact in case you were unaware that there was an airport, an Army airport, that used to operate at Fort Monroe. Now you know. And just another shot of quarters one where Lincoln stayed at Fort Monroe. Now we are uh, in the city of Hampton still and we're at the uh, Hampton Air Power Park um, off of Mercury Boulevard, uh, not too far from Interstate 64. And uh, again, since we're looking at an aviation watch, I figured I'd show you guys some of the aviation uh, museum pieces that we have at a different uh, area here in Hampton Roads here in the 757. So if you are a watch nerd and maybe an aviation nerd, uh, check out the Hampton Air Power Park. Um, I'll try to leave Google map links to a lot of these places in the description. So if you're visiting uh, Hampton Roads, the 757, um, come check these places out if you are an aviation uh, nerd like I am. So in conclusion, um, I just want to say this is a great timepiece. Um, it doesn't loom, even though it doesn't loom, even though the bezel does not rotate. Uh, I think it's a great aviation figure watch, uh, A style dial, and even though it's using a mineral crystal and not a sapphire dome crystal, I think for most of us to watch it will be just um, fine, and it's a watch uh, I, think you'll, I think you'll like. So here in these following clips, just give you guys an idea of the differences in sizes between the Star Co-Pilot and some Flieger watches I already own, and also coming up showing you guys how the size comparison is between other watches I own as well that I've already reviewed on the channel. So overall, I'm going to give a time piece uh, 5 clocks, even though it doesn't loom and the bezel does not rotate because it didn't say it loom and it did not say rotate either. So to be fair, I'm going to give it 5 clocks. It's been a great watch over this past week or so. I'm going to give a time piece. Also, please remember to check out my other YouTube channel if you're interested. For Junior Beach, like, share, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, I'm at Lance and Ocean Watch on Instagram and Lance and Ocean Watch on TikTok. And I thank all of you for subscribing, liking, and sharing both of my YouTube channels and Lance and Ocean Watch and Ocean Beach Ride Share from multiple locations in 757. Thank you for watching. Take care.